Hi, my name is Lars Hulvai and on this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to use hotels and more specifically Travelport rooms and more via Travelport Universal API. So in the GDS itself, in Galileo, in Worldspan, Apollo, we have a number of hotels. We have around 91,000 hotel properties split across 308 hotel chains. These are a lot of the major chains such as your Sheraton's or your Marriott's or your Hilton's. But we also have a product called Travelport Rooms and More which is a hotel aggregator engine. And that brings in additional properties up to 580,000 hotel properties available via the website. And they come in from up to 22 wholesalers and OTAs. We have a look at what the website looks like. It actually looks like this. So I've done a search for Copenhagen, uh, put in the dates I want, I put in what sort of rooms I want, how far from the city center, and I get a list back of hotels. And for any of these hotels, I can see some basic details. I can go in and I can see photos. So this is Beta Sky Cumberl. I can see what a room looked like, close it down. But the interesting thing is the price you see is just one out of many prices. So I can click show providers and that brings up a list of prices for this specific property from the different providers that offers that. So this one is actually aggregating prices from hotels.com, from Expedia, and from Turico, um, Turico Holidays. So for each of these, I can see the price, I can see the estimated commission they would pay, and I could see if this would tell in something that would require prepayment or postpayment. So if you pay before you stay, or if you pay after. If I want to, I can click in on a price, and I can see additional rates that might apply from this specific supplier, and I can continue through my booking. So that's actually quite cool. I get all of this aggregated from a lot of different providers, and I just need to go to one website. So Travelport Rooms and More can be used by anyone, no matter if they are a current Travelport GDS user or not. Now, the interesting thing is we can take that and bring that into Universal API. So what we have with Universal API is we get the Travelport Rooms and More. We don't get all the hotels, and we don't get that because it is an API, it might be used for website, and some of the providers prefer to do that via their own website. But we still get a a third of a million unique hotels. They pay an average of $34 of commission, and we get seven different providers through Universal API. So that's a great way of bringing additional content through Universal API. Here are some example content providers that we have in place today. We are expanding the providers all the time, so we get more and more into the system. So how does this work? Well, let's switch over to the API test tool and have a look at that. What we have here is a regular hotel search availability. So that will go in and search for available properties at a specific location and for a specific date range. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to go to Copenhagen. Uh, I want to search Copenhagen as a city rather than as an airport. And I put in some search parameters we'll, we'll get back to in a second. But if I do this search here, what I actually search right now is Galileo Hotels because that is what my provider is set up against. So I get hotels back and those hotels all come from Galileo. I can see the provider code is 1G, that's Galileo, and I get different hotels back. Now, the great thing about Universal API is with a single set of credentials, you can search multiple different providers, and we do that via the target branch or the work area branch, as is also known. So if I click Show Credentials, I right now have one target branch. If I change that value to, a specific, to another number, what I'm doing here is I'm using the same credentials, but I'm changing the area I'm using. So right now, if I do a new search with exactly the same parameters, it will search travel port rooms and more. And it will do that using all my search parameters from before. So when I get a response back now, you will see the provider code change to TIM. Now, I'm just quickly going to go back and talk briefly about some of the search parameters. Because when you search rooms and more, you can specify which providers you want to search. So you can put in some abbreviations that says these are the providers I want to search for hotels. So you can search all of them or you can search a subset. Also, travel port rooms and more have ratings. So you can go in and search for hotels that have a specific rating in rooms and more, or you can search for a range and say anything that is between two and four star, I want to bring that back. If we go back to my response, you will see that I get my hotels back, I get an address, I get um, a location with a latitude and longitude, so that means I can plot it all on a map if I want to. 
I get back the rating, which is four, which is good because that was what I asked for. I get a long list of amenities, so that would be things like, is there air conditioning in the room, is there an elevator, and so on. And then I get some rate information. So the minimum average stay amount and the average maximum stay amount can come back. And I also get an image back, so I can show uh, an image for the hotel. What I can do is, this is a list of properties. So this will bring back a number of properties that match my search parameters. But I want to show more detailed prices. So I'm going to take what I have here, and I'm going to bring up another transaction, which is hotel details. So hotel details is for a specific property. Bring me back all the prices that apply to that. So for this one here, you will see that um, I put in a hotel property, which I can get from my search availability response. I put in um, hotel details modifier, so that would be things like how many adults, how many children do I want, the dates that I search for, 